I love starting new builds in City Skylines, a blank canvas full of possibilities. But before you get too far into that next build, here are five things to consider before you get started. The first question you should ask yourself, what type of city are you building? Are you looking to build an extremely large metro area? Look to the global giants like New York, Los Angeles, and Tokyo for inspiration. Will your city have talented workforces and elite tech-driven research universities? Check out knowledge capitals like Stockholm, San Jose, and Seattle. Maybe you're designing a transportation and economic superpower in a developing region. Take a look at emerging gateways like Mumbai, Mexico City, and Istanbul. There are lots of types of cities. If you have a big picture in mind before you start, if your city has a focus, everything else will fall into place. Now that you have an idea in mind, let's take a look at the real world for inspiration. Anyone with a computer or a smartphone has one of the best tools at their disposal for getting inspired, and that's Google Earth. Look at how big cities in your area flow. Are you building a methodical concrete grid like New York? Or maybe something that looks completely unplanned like Boston? Does your city tower over the surrounding area? Or is it built up gradually coming to a peak in the downtown center? Every city is different. City Skylines is no exception. Borrow an idea from an existing city and make it unique, make it yours. The very first road you place might just be one of the most important decisions in your city. Because when you do, you're deciding between an exit and an interchange, even if you don't know it. Consider for a moment Marin Bay. This is one of the maps included with the Campus DLC. I'm currently building on this map using the area that you see on screen, so for me, these are two exits. But if I was building over this way, I may want the highway to continue on, joining up with the other highway at the top of the screen. In that case, we have one exit and more highway. You don't have access to highway roads when you first start your city, but that doesn't mean you can't treat regular roads like a highway, or at least a placeholder for a future highway. Use one-way roads to see exactly where the highway will be once you unlock it and can afford it. This way you can save yourself the hassle of demolishing neighborhoods in the future to make way for a new highway. Unless that's the aesthetic that you're going for, maybe you're modeling your city after somewhere in the US, and in that case, build now and plan later. Speaking of planning, I can't tell you how many times I've started laying out a neighborhood and moving people in, only to upgrade to a larger road later, displacing residents and businesses in the process. That problem only compounds itself if later on you decide to drop in something like a train station or other large building into an area that wasn't prepared for it. A little extra room between zones is a good thing. Leaving room for pedestrian paths can help reduce a ton of traffic when combined with a decent transport network. Making space for a cargo station or hub in your industrial area can help keep trucks in the zone and off the roads. Think about the different areas of the city. What do you want it to look like? What's the function of a particular area of the map? And how do you want it all connected? Measure twice, bulldoze never. The last point for your consideration is a complex one, but also important, road hierarchy. I want to boil it down into one simple principle. The further from the highway you get, the smaller the roads and the more frequent the intersections. Use your highways to handle most of the traffic moving around your city. Intersections should be kept as far apart as possible. Roads connecting directly to your highways are the arterial roads, seen here using the six-lane roads. Just like arteries carry blood around the body, arteries do the heavy lifting of moving traffic inside your city, once it's off the highway. Next are the collector roads, seen here using the four-lane, grass-lined streets. These collect traffic from smaller neighborhoods to pass it on to arterial roads, and it may only connect once with that road, smaller local roads will intersect with it more frequently. The two-lane tree-lined streets you see on screen are the local roads, and they're great for handling local traffic, but that's about it. If you set it all up correctly, the only reason anyone would be driving on a local road is to get to a residence or business in that area. A couple of quick points, although I've used two four and six lane roads to illustrate my point, I did that to make it easier to distinguish the different types of roads that we're talking about. This theory is still just as applicable and might even work better when using only two lane roads, for example. Sometimes there's no telling when it comes to City Skylines AI, and what lengths the drivers will go to to take any road except the one you expect. Also, the grid that I use for an example, which can be appropriate for higher density zones, can easily be adapted into a more suburban feel, but still use the same concepts when considering the intersections. 
At the end of the day, these are just some of the things to think about before you get started. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you always forget to save space for when you're building your cities? Hopefully this video gave you some ideas to get started. If it did, likes, comments, and shares all help the channel and are greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new and consider turning on notifications for updates in this and other series. If you want to follow me or support the channel, check out the links in the description down below. But until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.